Welcome back to Peace, Love and Tarot. This reading is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising and it's weekly reading for December 2nd to the 8th. We have the beautiful Council of Light Oracle card this week, Saggy. We have Strength, the Empress, the Five of Cups, the Seven of Cups, the Eight of Wands and the beautiful Magician as well. So half the spread is Major Arcana, guys. I say this every time, the more Major Arcana, the more significant the event or situation that you're dealing with and um, the more linked it can be with our karmic contract, our soul lessons um, and the big themes of life. <clears throat> so I'm um, just going to start off by reading out that oracle card for you, Council of Light. Divine orchestration, helpers in the subtle realms. The Council of Light is a team of benevolent beings who are here to assist the raising of consciousness on the planet. They are here to help you achieve your soul mission. They are guiding you every step of the way. However, because we live in a world where free will reigns, they cannot, cannot help you without your permission. If you would like their assistance, it's time to ask them. They can help you with all kinds of requests, nothing too big or small. Think of them as your personal team of helpers in the spirit realm. So, you know, you uh, you have the spirit team on your side this week, Saji. All you need to do is ask. They're there to support you. Um, there is definitely a big shift that's taking place this week. We are letting go of things that are holding us back, going through a release. You know, having the strength and courage to raise your vibration, shift your energy, realize that you're your own conscious creator. And I think after you have that... Um, realization you're going to reach a tipping point Saji and things are going to change and shift really quickly so I'm just going to start with the recent past here I'm really feeling these two cards together I think some of you have been focusing on things that just didn't materialize hollow maybe somebody was giving you hollow promises maybe you know you felt like the things that you wanted to achieve whether it's in love or business and career were just held at their arm's uh, reach from you and you just couldn't quite attain them. Now the Five of Cups talks about somebody who is quite focused on the past and through focusing on the past they're missing opportunities to move themselves forward in the present moment. So this person here is, you know, got a very firm gaze on these three spilt cups and that wine has already um, you know it's already left the cups it's soaked into the earth and there's no getting it back and putting it in there and um, you know through doing that when we keep ourselves in the past you know often we do feel you know depressed negative stagnant or stuck because we are focusing on something that has already been has already unfolded we can't change it so really we need to think about forward movement forward thinking if this person could just turn around they would see two beautiful opportunities right behind them you know this person you know all along there's been a bridge over the emotional waters because water in um, tarot is our emotions a beautiful bridge over the emotional turmoil to the sanctuary back to self-love back to the self but it's the choice the choice of this person which could be you to stay stuck on that past energy and by doing that Saji everything you know is an illusion it's an illusionary energy and because it's in the past you know the memories and, and unfulfilled wishes and unattainable um unattainable circumstances so I really feel like by doing that you are missing opportunities and also staying in a in an illusion really in a dreamlike state so it's really time to move out of that really need to turn around and focus on the future in order to be able to materialize tangible change and you know tangible um, desires into your reality and that shift is being called to make be made this week Saji. So we have the strength card and we have the magician. So powerful, powerful combo. This week you're invited to have the strength and courage to realize that only you can change your circumstances, you know, through your will, through your intention, through leaving the past in the past, through dropping that cape of negativity through focusing on the future now and absolutely there might be inner demons to tame or to bring into balance before you can really unleash your full potential as the creator or co-creator 
of your reality with the universe. So, for example, you know, somebody who is quite, you know, focused on the past might be thinking about how a situation played out unfavorably, wishing that you could have done something differently, um, all of those kind of emotions. There might be anger, there might be resent. Well, the strength card uh, invites us to meet those emotions and feelings with their equal opposite in order to balance them, to neutralize them, to dissolve them, to release them. So for example, with, if you're feeling anger and resent for a person, maybe a lover left you, maybe, you know, in the workplace, um, you were undermined, something like that, then we would meet that with forgiveness and compassion. And that is the antidote, the great antidote to anger, you know, forgiveness and compassion so that we can really release that and not hold on to those emotions anymore. When we move into a state of balance internally, you know, we reach our inner potential, we unlock our infinite potential, as does the magician. You know, they share that in common because they are having an awakening to their skills and talents to be the creator, to be able to control self-mastery, emotional intelligence, being able to control your emotional state, your inner demons, and then being able to have the power to create and move forward and to create a powerfully abundant future. Now, the interesting link between these two cards is that the saying with the magician goes, as above, so below. So what that's really saying is that our external world will be a reflection of our internal world. So if we focus on the past and we're feeling you know, depressed, maybe miserable, bit of a victim, um, harboring resent or anger, then we're going to see that in our external world. We're going to attract that. We're gonna find ourselves in similar situations. So it backs up our underlying belief that that is, you know, what we deserve, or that's what, um, you know, that is our reality. So by shifting that internal realm, by bringing it into balance, by, you know, neutralizing those feelings and turning them into the opposite, that's when we, that's alchemy, you know, that's when we shift, and that's when we start to attract higher vibrations towards us, you know, that's when we shift our external realm. It all starts with the internal realm. And you have every tool, you know, we've got a representation of each of the suits of the tarot deck here. You have all the tools that you need to be able to do that, to shift your reality, to create true abundance. And that's when, as the magician, again, you unlock that infinite potential. It's really limitless what you can achieve once you make that shift, Saji which pretty much is the theme of your near future here, the Empress and the Eight of Wands. So as I said, once you make that shift, what you can create, what you can birth into the physical realm, um, it is limitless. You know, the Empress is the biggest card of promise. She can materialize manifestations. So, you know, it can be a physical birth. It can be a new project that you want to get off the ground, a new love, a new job all of those kind of things. The Empress is pregnant and fertile with possibility. And, you know, we have that here with the Eight of Wands, which is swift change. So I think that once you make this shift, stop living in the past, stop living in the dream, in the illusion, you know, really come, become the conscious creator, change your internal world, things are going to shift in your external world very quickly with the Eight of Wands. There's a strong element of divine guidance here as well, which we have in your Oracle card. So it's like once you start making these shifts, you know, your spirit guides, angels, universe, whatever you call it in your belief system, kind of get the memo, you know, they get the, they get the SMS, the text message that you're now, you know, connecting with something great, you're now online, and they start helping you, because they see that you've taken the first steps, and they respond to that, and they help you, you know, really achieve your heart's desires. The Empress is a lot about reconnecting with yourself in terms of wholeness, um, authenticity, the divine feminine, the natural rhythms of your own body, of nature, of all of that. Because when we start to align ourselves, become whole again, you know, that's also when we can connect with our higher self and we are a much more powerful manifester when we're in that state. So beautiful energies here, Saji. 
We really just need to make that shift, bring those inner demons into balance, wake up to the fact that you are the creator of your reality, and then just watch your external world shift very swiftly. So Saji, that's what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. Um, it is a powerful one. Um, just keep in mind it's a general reading, so it won't be for every one of you guys. Feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always interested to know how it's playing out in your daily life. And I'll see you back here next week for another reading.